All right, Pickle. It is Mailbag Friday, presented by our friends at the North Texas Honda Dealers. Let me make sure I give them their love. I can do it. I pull. You told ah. me to pull it up, so oh, I could do it this time. Oh, you remember? I did. And we go to Ashley Pickle <laughs> for an ad read. Yes, because it is. The North Texas Honda Dealers want to help you score some great deals on award-winning Hondas. Stop by your helpful Honda dealer today or visit ntxhondadealers.com to learn more. Yeah, good job. <laughs> Thank you, helpful Honda dealers. We love you very much. Drive a Honda. Buy a Honda. Do Honda things. Um, <laughs> you. It's like no wonder that our sales team won't let us get like within 50 feet of a sale. Like they don't want us to do. I feel like I would be a closer. I feel like my sales strategy will work with some people. What is the move? No, no. Yes. No. Yes. There is a movie where the guy is so scared to, I don't remember which one it is, but he's so scared to go in for this job interview and he does good the whole entire time. And then he realizes, oh, I'm going to get this job. So when they walk out, he like loosens up and is himself and the guy's sitting there like, no, uh, like that would be you. <laughs> nah, I feel like I'm gonna. Be, I, I feel like I would be a good closer. I feel like I could do that because I'd be like, listen, I'm gonna put some personality in your ad. <laughs> like I'm not. I'm I, like you can give me copy points and that's great, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna give the people what, what they, they want, want. <laughs> which is to be entertained while they're listening. You to see all this? This is a lot of personality. <laughs> the North Texas Honda dealers. They're here to help. Okay. Uh, do we have any questions from the peeps? Um, the we have one question so far. Mm -hmm. And so we'll just go ahead and go with that one, I guess. Um, so Jacob John had said hello from Orlando. Good start. And asked, do do you have a favorite childhood vacation? Yes, I do. Okay. Um, and this is going to sound weird because I think most people are going to um, – I think most people are going to look at um, – of their favorite family vacation would be like, oh, well, when we when we went to the beach, mm -hmm. right? Um, but mine is in the summer of 1998. Uh, okay. It was my was my favorite vacation because we got in the car mm -hmm. and we drove from yeah 98. We were living in we were living in Dallas then. Um, we drove from DFW up to all the way up to Milwaukee mm -hmm. and back. And we stopped uh, – we did, the, like, a big Midwest road trip. Mm -hmm. And what was so cool about it was that we stopped a bunch of different places and we watched baseball games. So we went and we went to um, – we went to uh, Bush Stadium, which was old Bush Stadium at that point mm -hmm. um, in St. Louis. In, uh, and we watched them. And then we went to Wrigley Field and we watched uh, a game there. I think we might have gone to Comiskey too. Okay. Um, I've been at Comiskey, but I, I we might have gone to the South Side as well, or what it was now, PNC, U.S. Cellular Field, something like that. Mm -hmm. Who cares? Comiskey. Um, and then we went up to Milwaukee, and at that point it was still, I think it was the last year, or one of the last years of uh, Milwaukee County Stadium, so we went there. And the reason that it's so memorable for me is that if anybody knows anything about 1998 in baseball, that was when it was McGuire versus Sosa. That's when it was the the home run chase, and it was okay. really in the summer. It was really starting to cook with gas. Uh -huh. Like people were like, "Oh, these guys are doing things differently." Mm -hmm. And so we got I got to watch both Sammy Sosa and Mark McGuire hit a home run during the summer of ninety eight. Okay, that's cool. Which is just like super duper cool for yeah. me. Yeah. And so I I will I always remember that and we were i think we've mentioned this on the show before but like we were like we didn't fly places like mm -hmm. we were like flying flying was like for emergencies yeah you know what i mean like i remember like we flew to chicago for like my grandmother's funeral and i remember thinking like oh my gosh like crazy we're flying right you know what i mean because we just you know and especially with like my my, my, my i have two brothers and so yeah that's family, a family five, five i mean five plane tickets yeah that's a lot yeah you know what i mean no doubt um see it's funny because there's two that I always go back and forth on. One of it was basically the exact same thing that you just described, but with ours, it was going to different Six Flags. So mm, any vacation right. that we ever went on was we based it around Six Flags because you can get a season pass and you can use it at any park in the country. So that's a full day's worth of fun for basically free at that point. So my parents were like, the kids have no idea. We're saving money. This is awesome. So we would go do that. Um, and yeah, we went all the way up. We made a big stop in, we went to the St. Louis one, which mm -hmm. I'm sure you've been there. I have not. Uh, oh, really? No. 
Great America. Uh, like I like I'm I, I I've told you this. Like I like I like roller coasters, Here's but I don't seek them out. Okay. Uh, but our big stop was all the way up in Ohio, and we went to Cedar Point, um, mm. which is real big time. And we actually stayed on the park there for three days. So that was really fun. Um, but the other one that was super, super cool, and this one, again, based off of roller coaster trips. But we went to Atlanta um, and went to the Six Flags out there, and that was the first time in Georgia. So we did that. That was also the first time we were we drove from Atlanta to Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Mm -hmm. But on the way out, we stopped at Augusta to look down Magnolia Lane to see the Masters, which was just so cool. That's all you can see is down Magnolia Lane. But that was one of the coolest vacations that I went on for that reason. And Myrtle Beach was fantastic. The drive to South Carolina was great. Um, that one's probably my favorite. Okay. And then I got I'm to actually go to the Masters. That, so that, that makes is it even, the, That makes it even cool. better. That's cool. Even but, me, I me, not golf guy, uh -huh. can acknowledge that that is cool. Driving up to a place and being like, there's the road that leads to grass, but I, that seems a little bit... Right, but I never in my lifetime thought I would ever get to actually go into the course. Right. So even being able right. to see the USA bunker and this part of the clubhouse, it was like, as a kid, that was like, man, can you even imagine if we ever got to go there one day? Right. Yes, going to it was a whole other level of cool, but that... That imagination as a kid of maybe one day I'll get to go in there was like, I, I guess the, I stole a leaf. I guess the only I took a leaf back home. With what me. a <laughs> this is. We should just really rename this show. <laughs> Ashley Pickle tells on herself for you know every day. Oh. I guess it's weird, but like it's not really a vacation because we didn't go any. Well, we did, but like we didn't leave the city that we lived in. Mm -hmm. But when we lived in Atlanta in '96, we went to the Olympics. Oh, and, yeah. That's um, awesome. And so, and that was like our summer vacation because, like, we spent a lot of money on tickets and oh, stuff yeah. like that. And so we went to a bunch of, uh, bunch of tickets. We went to rowing. We went to men's Ooh. volleyball. We went to track. We got to see Michael Johnson. Was it run. sand volleyball? No, it was indoor. It was indoor. It was indoor. It was at Georgia Tech. Um, it was, we, we were there. We saw uh, team handball, which was amazing. Oh, <laughs> that was <been> amazing. So cool. <laughs> saw team handball. Uh, we, the one thing, and this, I'll never, uh, I'll never forget this. Cause I remember how mad my dad was. The one thing he spent, like the, the thing we spent the most money on, we, we, we basically were like, I don't want to say bargain hunters, but yeah. we were like, let's find tickets that we like are not super expensive. Like we were never going to swimming and diving. No. Swimming and diving is super expensive. We were never going to gymnastics. So do you have you have to pay for each event you go to? Yeah. Okay, I it's didn't not, know that. It's not like a it's not like it's it's basically like a bunch of different sporting yeah. events. It's not like Disney World city. where you get in and you right. get to go it's everywhere. Not like a park. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 no. It's like they are tick it's individual ticketed events. And and so we were never going to swimming and diving. We we're never going to gymnastics. Mm -hmm. um, and then a lot of the and then so uh, we did a lot of the like like I said like the off the beaten path stuff like the rowing yeah. stuff and stuff which was still super cool but it's like a little bit more off the beaten path right. The one thing my dad was like we're splurging on mm -hmm. was we went we got tickets to the gold medal game of baseball, Very the gold medal cool. game for baseball at Atlanta Fulton County Stadium and my dad was fired up oh. because he's like <laughs> it's going to be USA versus Cuba. It's going to be USA versus Cuba. Oh, we know so it is. Cool. Like everyone like the whole thing was like it was barreling towards there mm -hmm. and the semifinals the US lost to Japan. Oh. And so no. we showed up and we and we, we watched Japan versus Cuba. And I want to be very clear, it was a badass game because if I remember correctly, I think there were like two grand slams in the game. They use metal bats and it's like there's still like a, a, a decent number of MLB players on on these teams yeah. and stuff like that. It was an incredible game, like super. I I think Cuba won, but it was a, a an incredible game. I remember like being super entertained by it. Uh huh. And I also remember like my dad, like stewing, like my dad not like being like oh, we were supposed to see America here. <laughs> we were supposed. To. And then like what's made even worse, and I think the closest my dad's ever come to booing America <laughs> is is they won the third place game. They uh -huh. won the bronze medal game against whoever. And so they came. So after the game, they came out because they put the medal stand out there on the field. Oh no! And so they came out. <laughs> and so he gets to see and what my could dad have been. There just like I'll, I'll never forget my dad sitting there, was like, just like arms crossed. A typical. I'm not mad. I'm disappointed. Just like, <laughs> just like should have been you. You shouldn't. <laughs> you shouldn't show your face around here, Doug Drayback. 
Uh, yeah, that was <laughs> that was a that was a real like I I don't know like I remember thinking like man my dad's really mad at really the upset. USA <laughs> and he loves America. <laughs> <laughs> this is not good. Like, he's one of the most patriotic guys I know. He's so mad at them. <laughs> Uh, anyway, there you go. There was a, that's a, a summer vacation. That's so great. We have no football questions, so just buckle up for vacation Love questions it. here. Uh, worst vacation mishap was it? Was it your dad fuming? Uh oh boy, we got kicked out of a baseball stadium once. I guess that counts. Um, one in Savannah, Georgia. We oh went no. To, uh, a lot of these. If you if you're if you're catching a theme, well, y'all's a lot of, baseball a lot of, a lot was to our, our six a flags. Va- <laughs> a lot of vacations. Were yeah. Around baseball. We went to Savannah once. And they had a, a base. They had a team at that point. I think they're still around, called the Savannah Sandmats. And there was, um, we were at a game, and um, it, it's this old historic stadium in Savannah, mm-hmm. which and Savannah's gorgeous. Savannah's beautiful. Um, so we're there. It's a night game, and they had they. It's this old stadium, but they do have these um, these like concrete um, bleachers out in left field. I think it's only in left field. Uh-huh. That's the one that we went to. Uh, but they were blocked off. Like, there was, like, nobody out there. I think they were, like, structurally unsound, but they were around because they were historic. Uh, Babe Ruth hit a home run into those stands. Mm-hmm. So they were, like, they're kept around, stuff like that. And my dad, who taught me the value of just act like you know what you're doing, <laughs> we just, like, walked out there. Yeah. And, like, sat in there. And we were <laughs> the only schmoes sitting here in this – Stadium where there's a baseball game going on. Like, there are theoretically thousands of people at this game. I don't know right. how many people were there. But, like, there are thousands of people at this game. They could see us <laughs> out there. In hindsight, it was extremely dumb. <laughs> like, there's no there's no covert action in this. And so we kind of walk out there, just, like, walk past these things and go and sit down. And we sat there for probably three minutes mm-hmm. before a security guard came up to us. Guys, you guys can't be here. And, yeah, we got tossed out. <laughs> we got thrown out. That's great. We had a very similar situation in uh it was it was while I was in college. I don't remember maybe in between my sophomore and junior year. It was the first family vacation we had been on in a minute. Mm-hmm. And uh we went out to California and we're going to go to um, Kings Canyon National Park and, and the mm-hmm. Sequoias and all, all of that, the Northern California stuff. Um, so my dad had surprised us with an, with an overnight stay in, in Vegas. And hey obviously now. we weren't old enough to do anything, but we, <laughs> we walked up and down the street. I wasn't old enough to do anything. <laughs> Your dad surprised you? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So <laughs> that's some great hustle there. Yes, Lance. LP knew what he was doing. I like that. But when we finally got to California, we were driving. It was in between uh, the Sequoia National Park and the Redwoods. And there was this little place he had read about that had redwood trees. And it was this gorgeous like lake that you could mm-hmm. see out there. So he's like, we're going to take a little detour. We start going and we go around. We get into the place and there's like a gate like partially part like open and help you just start driving in the rental car down it. And we're going, it doesn't really look like this is a park. Like we're not really supposed to be here type of thing. And we get out and get to the lake and we're looking and all of a sudden, yeah, there's these park rangers and stuff and they've got these dogs and they're starting to bark and the park rangers are like, what are y'all doing out here? And LP was like, back to the car, back to the car. We got to go. We got to go. And we were like, what in the world? Were we not supposed to be here? He goes, oh, no, no, no. I was just hoping that the gate was going to be open and it was. So we went in there. Yes. And so, yeah, we start getting chased out by these park rangers and we're like, he's like, well, the gate was open. And yeah. I was like, no, 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 Dad, no. No. Uh, no. I, I, I fully... I fully support that. <laughs> I fully support, especially. I don't want to start getting into like a like a you know imminent domain conversation, but like <laughs> with parks and places like that, yeah, it's like that's theoretically public property. Yes, like I understand that there are rules and things like that, mm-hmm. and I'm not saying it should be a free for all, right? But if you if there's a gate open at a public place, mm-hmm. you are not, like, you are well within your rights, in my opinion. Yeah, just pull the, in the opinion oh, we of, didn't know, we're in tourists, In the opinion sorry. of this legal expert, <laughs> yeah. I think you're well within your rights to walk through that gate. I don't think he did anything wrong there. Like, I, for, like there were a bunch of barricades between us and those concrete stands in mm-hmm. Savannah. We knew what we were doing <laughs> there. 
But um, we were just gonna pull the tourist card right. and keep going. Well, I don't know. <laughs> well, like, but I, I do, I do believe that. I do believe, and, and I've told you this uh-huh. before a lot, which is, uh, if the worst thing that can happen is that somebody tells you no, that you need to leave, then okay. then okay, like push it to that point, like yep. make them tell you no. Mm-hmm. Like I, I, that's a guiding principle of my life. That's, oh yeah. Uh, you know, just you know, get away with what you can get away with. Mm-hmm. You know, no, Life's I completely short, agree. You know, get in, get a little trouble. I like it. Um. All right. What was the first time that someone made you feel old? Do you remember like a specific time? Which I know that I can say. You that can w- stop. <laughs> you are disqualified from the conversation. Okay. <laughs> You're disqualified. The first time somebody made me feel old. Boy, I don't know. Um, uh, I, I, I will, I will say there was one point in which, um, I don't even know when this was. Uh, I, I would presume. Let me make sure of this. Um, I, I, let me check the dates on this. So, as far as music that I like, uh, is concerned, like one, one band that I grew up listening to. Uh, was uh, like Pearl Jam. Uh-huh. Like I, I like you know I like Pearl Jam. Oh yeah, it's a hot take. <laughs> <laughs> I like Pearl Jam. <laughs> um, I remember because my dad would always listen to uh, like the 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 classic rock station, mm-hmm. right? The classic rock station, and I remember very distinctly. I think that their their bar for what constituted classic rock, yeah, was if it was twenty years old. Okay. And so, in 2013, they started playing, like, songs from, uh, like, the album 10, which was their debut album. Mm -hmm. Like, they started playing, like, Even Flow on the classic rock station. (laughs) And I'm like, what in the hell? Uh -uh. Uh Uh-uh. No. (laughs) That's not happening. (laughs) Absolutely not. At this point, this is, like, 2013. Uh I think, think, uh, okay, yeah. 10 came out in to the in 91 so even could have been 2011 right but like at that point in 2011 i'm like 26 25 26 uh-huh. and stuff like that it's like what are we doing, doing. here like like <laughs> how that th- yep. i remember that very distinctly of like being out by my dad's pool mm-hmm. and having like my focus the pool same and, station and, and that's have always the, have, on yeah, the same station that's always on I'm like and here's uh you know here is uh jeremy by pearl jam <laughs> and i'm like what no <laughs> absolutely not you're not allowed to have this yeah that was one moment that I, I that sticks in my head see i think my like the the real first time i think it ever really oh really hit me was like my brother this year is a senior in high school mm-hmm. And so he start like the moment that Jake went to senior sunrise, which is on the first day of school, you go watch the sunrise. Obviously, that kind of makes sense. It's in the name. No, that tracks. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so when I got a picture of Jake at senior sunrise like this past August, it was like, whoa. Yeah. How did, mainly because we always talked about it. It was always one of those things like, oh, when Jake's a senior, oh my God, I'll be 24 years old. Like oh that's my God, crazy. Shut but up. but it's like it's crazy that oh now we're here. You can relate to that, like you said. I mean, 25, I, 26 was right about the time it started to hit you. Yeah, I'm getting there. Yeah, I guess what I'll say is that I do think, um, and and I think I've I've you know I'll say it again before, I I do think that um, that 2021 feels like the future. Yeah, like, it feels like that's like, like futuristic. what Futurama should have been. It, yeah, you know? exactly. Like, it does feel back like to the future it happened. Does, it does feel like we're living in the future. So, yeah, uh, yeah I can I can. Or the Flintstones. Yes, like, exactly. <laughs> or not the Flintstones. Uh, the Jets, the, the Jetsons. Jetsons, the yeah. Jetsons. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> it's like things that happen in 2021. Like we should have flying like cars future. by now. <laughs> right. Exactly. All right. Let's do uh, we have one more. Um. Yeah, let's see. We'll go. Got to go with a good one. Yeah. No pressure. What is your favorite arcade video game and board game? Those are two. S- those are definitely two those separate are two things. Very different things. Um, boy. I think I can. I can. I, I know mine off the top of my head. Here comes Ashley Pickle. Arcade game, NBA Jam. Okay. Hands down. Okay. Board game. Mm. And this is this is another thing. Do you consider like dice games? Board yeah, games? yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, dice. Yeah. Okay. 
Dice Love games. Yassi. I think dice games count as board games. I, I do mean, too. I think card games count as board games. Yeah, I think dice games definitely do. I, and Yahtzee comes in a, anything I feel like that comes in like a cardboard box. Mm-hmm. I would consider a board game. You know what I like? This is this is maybe I'm weird. What? I always thought Connect Four was a lot of fun. Okay. I like Connect Four. It's an That's anticipation kind of a board game. game. It's it's, yeah. a th- it's a thinking man's game. Yeah, I mean a it comes it comes game. in a a board box yeah, like that's yeah to me yeah it, it, there, it's a it's thinking man's game yeah is uh is i always like connect Four because it's such a simple task but there's just enough strategy nba jam was excellent mm-hmm. um there was a moment in my life mm-hmm. i'm not pr- i'm not too proud to say there was a moment in my life where i was super into dance dance revolution yes <laughs> there's a moment yeah. in my life did you have it at home did you ever have dance dance revolution at home yes we had it for, for the spell. ps2 yeah, where you I could plug the mats mm-hmm. into it, and it made the yeah. <laughs> there was sound. That. Yeah, well, it was, it was like like uh, the, this is beyond your years, but uh, whenever like you had the NES and it would have the track and field pad and stuff like yep. that, and nobody yep. ever ran on it. You just use your, your hands, hands on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, that was that was a big one. Uh, I will also say like NFL Blitz. I'm a big yes. NFL Blitz guy, um, and I'll wreck you in NFL Blitz. Okay. Um, I like, okay. like we've been, like we've been talking ever since we moved into our new offices, which has now we've been like two years. Yeah. I haven't seen years, any fun years? around here. Oh my gosh. Has it been three years? Uh, oh boy. Ah, ah, I'm having a time as a flat circle moment. <laughs> um, but ever since then we like, we've been told like, oh yeah, we're going to make this fun office. Like we're going to have like, you know, we can get an arcade cab there. Or maybe we can get like a shuffleboard uh-huh. thing. Uh, hey pickle, can you take a look out those windows and see if you see any, uh, no, fun going on? Nothing. No. At all. No. It's not okay. This is the, me calling out my boss on the air, <laughs> on the air that he's paying for, on the equipment that he paid for. It's a bold strategy. This equipment's one thing, but we need we need arcade game equipment. Bold strategy, yeah. Uh, the other thing real fast I got to mention, like, and this is, I don't know if you could consider it an arcade game, but it's at arcades. I love skee-ball. I absolutely love skee-ball. So one thing you should know. Yes. Uh, this is honest conversation with you. One thing you should know is that there is a rivalry in this office that you don't know about. Okay. Between our, uh, I think, the director of sales. Is that Rudy's title? Something like that. Uh, I don't big, know. big wig of sales. Yeah. Big big sales guy. Big Rudy. sales guy. <laughs> and other big sales guy, Robel. Yes. And it is over the arcade game Papa Shot. Oh. And, oh, I love and basically Papa there's, Shot. A lot of, there's a lot of chirping between these two. Uh-huh. A lot of chirping. Between these two, in just and, normal day things, and, and normally when we go to coaching school, yeah, in San Antonio by the hotel that we stay at, uh-huh. there is a Dave and Buster's, or at least there yes. was, there's yeah, D and B, yeah, in the in the in the mall, yeah, in the mall, yeah, like in the basement. Oh, I've been to that one, yeah. Um, we usually go there, yes. for a little bit, and um, and waste waste some time and money, good, and, and definitely pop a shot. It's it's like now I freely recognize that I I am average to below average in Papa Shot. Okay. So I don't even contend. I'm, I'm just like, sure, like, I'm here to have fun. I want to put my hat in the you ring. You should throw your hat in the ring. I, I definitely um, want to. Max is pretty good, if I remember correctly. That doesn't surprise me. Um, he seems like a like but, a dark horse candidate. But that is a big rivalry. That is a big rivalry. Okay. Uh, is that well, I'm definitely here so, for that. And and so that's one thing to keep an eye on. We used to have a Pop Shot itself. That's something I practice a lot in school. college. People, <laughs> long shot. time. TFT, TFT OGs, <laughs> remember, we used to have, Max and I used to have a, a, a small Pop Shot in our office, in, in the studio. Yeah, I heard y'all got in trouble for being too loud. We used to get in trouble a lot. <laughs> now I'm just old and long. Yeah, why did I come in in the not fun times? Well, normally the fun is dictated by the producer, so. Oh, 